What is up? You asked for it and you got it. Based on the popularity of the last lesson that we made teaching you English with Eminem and some of his rap songs, we are back this time with a humorous lesson featuring Jimmy Kimmel. So let's learn how to rap in English with Eminem. Thanks for meeting with me. I appreciate it. I know mean, you know my goal is to become a rapper, and I don't know. Are you serious? Yeah, I am serious. I'm sick of doing the show, to be honest with you. I'm really sick of it. Okay. Well, for me, what I do in my career is. I, I like to draw like things from my, my past, and, you know what I mean? Like, and yeah. think of something that upset you as a child or something like that. Like emotional pain. Yeah, like emotional pain, like things to, you know. Oh, all right. Um, when I was in high school, I was a manager of, of the shoe department at the clothing store, and I never really felt appreciated. So that could be something. That, that, that's a start, that's a start, you know. You know what the worst thing that happened to me, I think, as a kid is? It was my first day of junior high school, and my dad got a new briefcase. And so his old briefcase was sitting in the kitchen, and my mom said, I have a good idea. You should put your books in the briefcase. And the first minute of my first day of junior high school, I walked into the school cafeteria and with my briefcase, and these big kids screamed at me, hey, briefcase Joe. Maybe you could use that as your rap name, like briefcase Joe. You're so, saying takes like my weakness and turn it into to a yeah to a strength it. yeah then you turn your negatives into a positive. I like that. I can do that. I mean, you should be writing all these things down, honestly, man. Yeah, let's put it on a paper with pens. All right, so now we are going to help you understand everything from that first clip. But before we do, I wanted to let you know that if you're new here, every week we make fun lessons just like this one, so that you can understand fast speaking natives without getting lost without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Just like Artur, who tells us that our lessons help him to immerse himself in English while having fun. So if you're ready to get real English fluency, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button and the bell and below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. Yeah, I am serious. I'm sick of doing the show, to be honest with you. Really sick of him. Here, Jimmy's explaining why he wants to pursue a career as a rapper. He's sick of his job. What that means is that he's angry or bored with his job. We say this when we've been doing the same thing for a long time, or when we are annoyed at a person. I cannot be a waitress anymore. I mean it. I'm sick of the lousy tips. Sick of being called, excuse me. <laughs> so sick. Of guys. I don't want to look at another guy. I don't want to think about another guy. I don't even want to be near another guy. Okay. Well, for me, what I do in my career is I, I like to draw like things from my, my past. And, you know what I mean? Like, and yeah. think of something that upsets you as a child or something like that. Or... Like emotional pain. We just said Joe wants to have a career as a rapper. And here, Eminem talks about his career as one. This word, however, needs a little clarification because it's often confusing for learners. A career is a job or profession that you have been trained for, and which you do for a long period of your life. For example, we can talk about Joey's career as an actor or Phoebe's career as a singer. Although both wildly unsuccessful ones, that's what you refer to as a career. Although in some languages your career might be what you study, this is not the case in English. To talk about your studies, we might say, for example, Ross majored in paleontology, or I'm studying a bachelor's degree in American literature. Back to the clip, Eminem says he draws things from his past. Draw has many different meanings. The one Eminem is expressing here is to get something that you need or want from something. Like in this example where Phil and Gloria are performing as actors. When Gloria doesn't feel she's doing a good job acting, Phil tells her she should draw from her life. In other words, take inspiration from events in her life. I really felt like I nailed that last one. I still feel so stiff. I don't know what to pretend saying. You're thinking too much. Just draw from your own life. What, like, how was your day today? Lousy. My own son didn't want to hug me. Okay, so use that. I like to draw like things from my, my past. And, you know what I mean? Like, and yeah. Think of something that upset you as a child or something like that. If something upsets you, it makes you feel unhappy or worried. This is a verb and an adjective. Here's one example of each. I'm sorry, 
to have to break it to you, but that is the way the Electoral College works, man. It, it seems so unfair. So votes don't mean as much. It upsets me, too. I'm so glad you called. Chandler told me what happened. You know, he's really upset about it. Not as upset as he's gonna be when he finds out what I did with his sweater vests. <laughs> what did you do to his sweater vests? Let's just say there's a well-dressed pack of dogs in Ohio. Um, when I was in high school, I was a manager of, of the shoe department at the clothing store, and I never really felt appreciated. It looks like Joe's biggest tragedy in life was feeling unappreciated as a manager of the shoe department. Obviously, Eminem was going for something more serious here, so Joe's response is quite funny. The meaning of appreciated here is to feel that other people like you and value what you do. I never meant to make you feel unwelcome in my home. Well, Alan has a new place now. A place where he's appreciated. A place where he feels safe. I appreciate you too. That's why I've been leaving messages with Herb for days. What? By the way, Joe used this word at the You're beginning right of the clip, There's still but a baby with a mother. different meaning. Thanks. So you also heard let it go. When you say, I appreciate it, you're simply saying thank you. If you add more words after it, you're expressing why you're thankful, as in these examples. I, I just want to, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you giving me uh, an opportunity here because I, you're the most talented chef I've ever worked for. That makes me feel so much better. Thank you guys. And as a token of my appreciation, I would like to give you these. Great. The cool thing is you can eat whatever you want. These are right there with you. Speaking English fluently means knowing a variety of subtly different ways to say the same thing. Such is the case of saying, I appreciate it instead of simply, thank you. So if you want to have more natural English speech, you might want to check out this lesson where we will teach you a variety of expressions that natives use instead of thank you. And I never really felt appreciated. So that could be something. That, that, that's a start, that's a start, you know. Normally when we say that's something, we mean that whatever it is that we're referring to has potential or is a good idea. Example, I don't want to stay home and watch a movie. How about we go shopping? Now that's something. Or, as in the following example, we also say this to mean it's better than nothing. Are you guys pretty serious? Or? Yeah, we are pretty serious. And yeah, we live together. I mean, different bedrooms, but shared bathrooms, so that's something. However, Eminem is being sarcastic and creating some subtle humor because Joe's ideas are terrible. Then he says that's a start. This is what we say when something is a relatively good first try at something. It's like saying, it's not perfect, but at least it's something. Example, one exercise class a week isn't enough, but it's a start. You know what the worst thing that happened to me, I think, as a kid is? We're going to talk about the grammar in this sentence. I want you to first look at these two sentences and think about which one is correct. I don't know what that is. I don't know what is that. It wouldn't be uncommon for someone to put is here in the middle of the sentence, but in reality, that would be a mistake. This is why we would ask, do you know what the time is? And not, do you know what is the time? In this sentence, the real question is, do you know? If we put is here, that would also have the form of a question. Let's consider these two questions. Can you tell me? Who is that man? Now, if we merge these two questions into one sentence, it'd be like this. Can you tell me who that man is? Only one can keep the structure of a question. So saying, can you tell me who is that man, is not grammatically correct. Let's take a look at some examples. Note that here Rachel doesn't say, what's an apothecary? She says, what an apothecary is. Yeah, it's an apothecary table. Does anyone even know what an apothecary is? A pharmacist. <laughs> here, it's the same thing, but with was. It's not, do you remember where was that? It's... We went out some bar. Do you remember where that was? Do you know where the vending machines are? Now, why don't you practice it? Pause the video and write your own example down in the comments below. Also, look at what other learners said. We'll create a special quiz with this grammar point at the end, so be prepared. Hey, do you want to improve your vocabulary and master American pronunciation so that you can confidently understand fast-speaking natives? Well, we've got a fun and powerful way for you to do it with our Fluent with Friends course. 
This course will take you on an adventure learning English with the TV series Friends, which is highly regarded not only as one of the best TV series of all time, but also one of the best to learn English with. Every week you get PDF power lessons, vocabulary memorization software, and so much more. Plus, you will never be alone in your learning because you also get access to our global community of learners from all over the world, the Fluency Circle. The best part is you can try that all for free right now with our three-part masterclass. All you have to do is click up here or down in the description below to learn more and sign up. And we're really looking forward to meeting you inside. You know what the worst thing that happened to me, I think, as a kid is? It was my first day of junior high school. Junior high school refers to the three years of school between elementary school and high school in the United States. This is also commonly called middle school. At this type of school, we find students from 11 to 14 years old. Now, how about a quick cultural test on your knowledge of the American school system? Which of these words is different or doesn't belong? In the United States, freshman year refers to the first year of high school or college. Sophomore, the second year, junior, the third year, and senior, the fourth year. We can also call a student by the respective name. Example, she's going to be a senior this year. He's a freshman at Washington State University. And my dad got a new briefcase. And so his old briefcase was sitting in the kitchen and my mom said, I have a good idea. Let's have another quick quiz. Which of these is a briefcase? In his story, this old briefcase was sitting in the kitchen. This use of the verb sit is different from the basic meaning of to be on a seat, as in the picture. Actually, only advanced speakers say this word with this meaning. If something is sitting, it is in one place for a long time and not being used. Example, I have an exercise bike just sitting at home, not being used. It also means to be in a particular place, as in this example. It's on my 16th birthday. I go outside the house and there's that car sitting in the driveway. Maybe you could use that as your rap name, a like briefcase joke. You're so, saying takes like my weakness and turn it into to a yeah, to a strength. It. Yeah. Weak and strong are both adjectives. You turn weak into a noun adding ness and strong by changing it into the word strength. When you use these words as nouns, they usually refer to things you're good at, strengths, and not so good at, weaknesses or, as is the case here, aspects of your character or personality that you can consider as good to have and not so good to have. Mike's weakness is that he doesn't have much experience for the job. However, his strength is that he's a quick learner. Captain, turn your greatest weakness into your greatest strength. Then, he says own it. Yeah, to own strength, it. yeah. If you own your weakness, you are aware of them and you accept them as part of yourself. I just try to think of things that rhyme with Joe because it's briefcase Joe, and I was thinking like the word like go rhymes with Joe. Right. And go. like Mo, like if somebody's name was Mo. Right. Doe. Oh, that's good. Like uh, they call me briefcase Joe. I got a body made of pizza dough, you know. Wait, made I got a body made of pizza dough? Pizza dough, yeah. I got testicles. In oh. My yeah, I do have those. Yeah, I have two of them. I'm like an Eskimo. I go to Mexico with my vegetable testicles. Yeah, 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 yeah. there you go. I, if it's not good enough, I can try to like, no, you know, it's, if, you, if you don't like it. It's I, not that it's not good enough, know what I, I'm saying, it's just that I ain't mad at you. Okay, you know. No, I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Yeah, I ain't mad at you either. Good, I mean, I'm mad at you, know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I, I feel you. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Yeah, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Maybe something like this. Maybe you could say something like this. Yo, here I go, they call me Briefcase Joe. I'm flipping and skipping and ripping and dipping. I hit him with venom and enema. Give him an enema, then hit him up right in front of the cinema. Skin him alive, rocking the party as soon as the women arrive. Then I'm a driver, stake in their heart and squirt lemon in their eyes. Like something like that, you know what I mean? Like just kind of simple. I just try to think of things that rhyme with Joe. We start off by saying, I'm just. If you're wondering where this T goes, the answer is we don't need to say it because the next word begins with a T. 
So they should sound as one, similar to these examples. I'm just trying to be a good neighbor. What? Dude, I'm just trying to speak your language. <laughs> then it continues as trying to think of. We generally don't bother to pronounce this G. This is reduced to ta. Don't say two. And these two connected as think of. The rest should be easy. Things that rhyme with Joe. Altogether, I'm just trying to think of things that rhyme with Joe. I'm just trying to think of things that rhyme with Joe. I'm just trying to think of things that rhyme with Joe. I'm just trying to think of things that rhyme with Joe. Hey, just a quick interruption. If you're enjoying this lesson, then remember to check out the other lesson that we made with Eminem and his rap songs. You're going to love it. Just check out this quick clip. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mom's spaghetti, he's nervous. But on the surface, he looks calm and ready to drop bombs. But he keeps on forgetting when he broke down. The whole crowd goes so loud. He opens his mouth, but the words won't come out. He's choking how? Everybody's choking now. The clocks run out. Time's up, over blow. Snap back to come on. reality. So if you want to watch that, just click up here or down in the description below after this lesson to find it. And if you want more lessons with Eminem, then let us know by hitting that like button down below. Doe? Oh, that's good. Like, uh, they call me Briefcase Joe. I got a body made of pizza dough, you know? Dough is a mixture of flour and water ready to be baked into bread, pastry, etc. In this context, he uses the literal meaning of this word, but as slang, this word is commonly used to mean money. Mad at me because I can finally afford to provide my family with groceries. Got a crib with a studio and a saw full of tracks to add to the wall full of plaques. Hanging up in the office and back of my house like trophies. Did y'all think I'ma let my toe freeze? Hold please, you better bow down on both knees. Who you think taught you to smoke trees? Who you think brought you to ODs? If it's not good enough, I could try to like, no, you know, if, you, if you don't like it. It's I not that it's not good enough, know what I, I'm saying, it's just that I ain't mad at you. Okay. In this part of the clip, they make a parody of rap and the slang that's often associated with it. You know what I'm saying means the same as you know what I mean, but is considered to be more street-like. Maybe this clip will help you understand what I am saying. What's up, dog? <laughs> not much, dog. What's up with you? I'm here to pick up Casey, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Well, I'm awake and I speak English, so yeah, I do know what you're saying. What's your name, man? Scotty P, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Again, I do know what you're saying, but I appreciate you continuing to check in with me on that. What about you guys? Where you uh, stopping in from, you know what I'm saying? Uh, D-Town. Oh, Detroit! No, 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 the other one. D-Town, the other D-Town. Denver. That's the one. There you go. <laughs> Colorado. You go. That's the one. Yeah, I love my Rockies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, you like the Rockies? Are you a big baseball fan? Uh, no, the mountains. Of course. Hey, those are cool tats, man. Oh, for real. Thank you, bro. You yeah. see the cobra? Hey, what is this one? What's the one right there? Oh, this? Uh-huh. That's my credo. No regrets. Mm-hmm. How about that? You have no regrets? Dad? Nope. Not one? Nope. <laughs> I wish I did to talk about something. Not one regret, huh? That's how I've been living my whole life. I went to a tattoo artist. I was like, this is how I live. Can you put that on my body? And he did. Dad. Like not even a single letter? Nah, I can't think of one. I love all the letters. <laughs> know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know. No, I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Yeah, I ain't mad at you. Either. Good. I mean, I'm mad at you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is another slang word from the world of hip hop. According to Urban Dictionary, this is sometimes used just to describe something that is simply okay, but more often used in the context of describing something that you initially expected to be unpleasant or unsavory, but through experience found it much more tolerable and possibly enjoyable than you had previously thought. Example, I thought that the movie was gonna suck, but you know what, I ain't mad at it. It is unlikely that you encounter this use of the word mad very often. In American English, it usually means the same as angry. That's it, get out! I don't understand why you're mad at me. You should be mad at Amy, like I was this afternoon. So Jimmy and Eminem may be playing with these two meanings of the word here. Also, did you notice how he said this? Yeah, I imagine you're good, I mean. That's called a double negative. Why? 
because I ain't equals to I'm not, which is a negative expression. Neither is your second negative. In English, double negatives are not correct, although you can encounter them in some colloquial speech. However, keep in mind that this is not considered a very educated way to speak. To avoid making the mistake of the double negative, he should have said, I ain't mad at you either. It's not your fault. It's, it's not mine either. It's no one's fault. I mean, I'm mad at you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I, I feel you. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also slang, I feel you means I get you or I understand what you're saying or feeling. I'm not getting a teaching job. Mm. Just can't go back out there, you know? No, I feel you, Jess. I took a sick day. I just stayed at home and did a watercolor of mountains. All right. So remember, just, you know, kind of rock with it. You know, just your natural rhythm. Just let it, let, you know, let it flow, okay. flow free. Yeah, OK. OK, good. Yeah, this one's going out to all my homies in Compton. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, do, do you know anybody? Hmm? Do you know anybody? From Compton? From Compton? No, no, I don't know anybody. Yeah, you might not want to say that then. Oh, okay. All right, let me try it again. Yo, this one's going to all my homies in Sherman Oaks. I know people there. Okay. Hang on one second. Yeah. Oh, try that. Oh, all right. A little inspiration. Thank you. So remember, just you know, kind of rock with it. You know, just your natural rhythm. Just let it, let you know, let it flow, okay. flow free. Here, Eminem uses a few different words to express the same idea that Jimmy should try to flow with the music without overthinking it. Yeah. This one's going out to all my homies in Compton. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, do, do you know hmm? anybody? Do you know anybody? Compton? From Compton. Compton is a city in southern Los Angeles County, California, that has the reputation of being violent and full of crime. In the rap world, this city is known as one of the places where gangster rap originated, especially because of the prominence of NWA. What up? I got something to say. <laughs> You can guess that Joe here is trying to act tough. That is to say, as someone who's had a hard life. That's why he lies about his origins. So then, Eminem suggests he changes it. He says he knows people in Sherman Oaks, a neighborhood near Los Angeles. Now this is hilarious because it is basically the opposite of Compton. It is a peaceful area popular with families. So obviously shouting out to his homies from Sherman Oaks does not make him seem very cool at all. Yo, this one's going to all my homies in Sherman Oaks. I know people there. Yo is an informal way we sometimes use to address someone. Although this word originated from rap and only a few people said it, nowadays more and more people use it as a colloquial alternative to hello. Yo. Still no movement. How's the stack machine? Yo, no Bing! Wreck it ball in 20 minutes. Joey, be a pal. Lift up my hand and smack her with it. <laughs> Thanks for meeting with me. I appreciate it. And I know you know my goal is to become a rapper, and I don't know. Are you serious? Yeah, I am serious. I'm sick of doing the show, to be honest with you. Really sick of it. Okay. Well, for me, what I do in my career is, I, I like to draw like things from my my past, and you know what I mean, like and yeah. think of something that upset you as a child or something like that. Like emotional pain. Yeah, like emotional pain, like things to you know. Oh, all right. Um, when I was in high school, I was manager of, of the shoe department at the clothing store, and I never really felt appreciated. You have a beautiful voice. Thank you. It's nice to be appreciated. 
Thank you, Michael, for staying on. I really appreciate it. Oh. Yes, and thank you, Phil, for making me appreciate Mitchell. So that could be something. That, that, that's a start. That's a start, you know. You know what the worst thing that happened to me, I think, as a kid is? It was my first day of junior high school, and my dad got a new briefcase. And so his old briefcase was sitting in the kitchen, and my mom said, I have a good idea. You should put your books in the briefcase. And the first minute of my first day of junior high school, I walked into the school cafeteria and with my briefcase, and these big kids screamed at me, hey, briefcase Joe. Maybe you could use that as your rap name, as briefcase Joe. You're saying takes like my weakness and turn it into to a yeah to a strength it. yeah then you turn your negatives into a positive. I like that. I can do that. I mean, you should be writing all these things down, honestly, man. Yeah, let's put it down on paper with pens. I just try to think of things that rhyme with Joe because it's briefcase Joe, and I was thinking like the word like go rhymes with Joe. Right. And go. like Mo, like if somebody's name was Mo. Right. Doe, oh, that's good. Like, uh, they call me Briefcase Joe. I got a body made of pizza dough, you know? Wait, made I got a body made of pizza, pizza dough? Pizza dough, yeah. I got testicles. In oh, my... yeah, I do have those. Yeah, <laughs> I have two of them. I'm like an Eskimo. I go to Mexico with my vegetable testicles. Yeah, 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 yeah there you go. I... If it's not good enough, I can try to like, no, you know, it's, if, you, if you don't like it, I... It's not that it's not good enough, know what I, I'm saying, it's just that I ain't mad at you. Okay, you know. No, I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Yeah, I ain't mad at you either. Good, I mean, I'm mad at you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I, I feel you. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Maybe something like this, maybe you could say something like this. Okay. Yo, here I go, they call me Briefcase Joe. I'm flipping and skipping and ripping and dipping, I hit him with venom and enema. Give him an enema, then hit him up right in front of the cinema. Skin him alive, rocking the party as soon as the women arrive. Then I'm a driver, stake in their heart and squirt lemon in their eyes. Like, something like that, you know what I mean? Like, just kind of simple. All right. So remember, just, you know, kind of rock with it. You know, just your natural rhythm, just let it, let, you know, let it flow, okay. flow free. Yeah, okay. Okay, good. Yeah, this one's going out to all my homies in Compton. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, do, do you know hmm? anybody? Do you know anybody? Compton? From Compton? No. No, I don't know anybody. Yeah, you might not want to say that then. Oh, okay. All right, let me try it again. Yo, this one's going to all my homies in Sherman Oaks. I know people there. Okay. Hang on one second. Yeah. Oh. Try that. Oh. All right. A little inspiration. Thank you. Yeah, this is going out to those two jerks from junior high school who called me Briefcase Joe. And guess what? Now it's come to pass that it's turned out to be a good thing for me. Yeah, tell them. Yo, here I go, they call me Briefcase Joe. I write my lyrics down for a keepsake, yo. On the microphone, hear the beats, they go. You could be the rapper, I'm the DJ, yo. My lyrics just erupt like a volcano. Everywhere I walk, when I talk, they know. I'm flipping and dipping and dripping and ripping. I hit him with venom and enema and enema. I hit him up right in front of the cinema. I skin him alive. It's bliss. Seeing the women arrive, I, I'm driving stake through their hearts. Yeah. And squirt. Yeah. Lemon in their yeah. eyes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Briefcase Joe. They call him. They call him. They call him Briefcase Joe. His name is. His name is Briefcase Joe. He don't carry that briefcase to school no more. Testicles 
of yeah. vegetables, they're going to Mexico, they on the just can't grow, yo. Chicken, 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 Thank you. You wanted Thank it? You. you got it. Briefcase Joe is in, so big ups to your briefcase. Eminem, you are done, son. Goodbye. That briefcase Joe. Hey, that's in the water. It's my briefcase. Hey, hey, wait up. His name's Briefcase Joe. Stand up, please stand up. Cause I'm Slim Shady, yes, I'm the real Shady. All you other Slim Shadies are just imitating. So won't the real Slim Shady please stand up? Stand up, please stand up. I'm like a head trip to listen to. Cause I'm only giving you things you joke about with your friends inside your living room. The only difference is I got the balls to say it in front of y'all. And I don't gotta be false to sugarcoat.